तो हेलो इंटरनेट व्हाट्सअप वेलकम टू जे एस कैफे आई एम बैक विद अनदर कंपनी इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन एंड दिस टाइम वी विल टॉक अबाउट पोस्ट पैंड फॉर द पोजिशन ऑफ एच डी टू फ्रंट एंड एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस ओनली द टेक्निकल राउंड so there were three technical rounds for this particular role the first one was a front end round the next was a system design round and the next was a coding round so let's quickly discuss what was asked in the round 1 so in the round 1 as said earlier it is a front end round so they'll test your knowledge around front end technology it would not be uh, only limited to js or uh, html they can touch any topic in this particular round so it is kind of a mix of you know uh, js html css uh, probably they might ask some fundamental concept of, about web or uh, they might ask something about react okay so it is completely unpredictable in this round what they are going to ask so the first question was uh, what do you understand by micro front end architecture so uh, i guess you they can talk about uh, monolith repos they can talk about micro front end repos so you you should have understanding that how a monolith is different from a micro front end architecture and what are the various other methods to maintain a project so this was a question number 1 next they asked how is dom traversed so basically first of all you have to explain them what is dom then you have to explain what is a uh, child parent hierarchy inside a dom how it follows a tree structure and you can then follow up upon the various um, functions that are present in js to traverse a dom and then you can tell that this is a uh, this is how we traverse a node in a dom and other stuffs so this was the question 2 and they might ask follow up questions on this as well so be prepared for it next is uh, the third question is what is rendering cycle of any component so this is again related to react and in this particular question they they are expecting you to start off with the very initial life cycle and finish up with the component unmount okay and you have to explain in between what are the various life cycles so this is a very basic react question and this everyone knows in react but just they want to understand how in depth you understand a life cycle when would a component did a uh, mount will trigger then what are the changes that you have observed uh, when moving from a class based component to a functional component that is hooks so you can tell something about that the next question was asked on how is virtual dom in react different from a normal dom so you can uh, talk about the uh, features of virtual dom how it is quick than dom and other parts and you can also talk about the algorithm that the react uses to uh, compare between the real dom and the virtual dom and how it updates only a certain part of the dom right so this is the place where you can uh, showcase your like show uh, your knowledge to the interviewer next uh, question was what is csrf and do you know something about web security how react handles that so we have a csrf token that is present and you can google it out uh, about it and understand um, how csrf tokens work and also i am planning to make a video on this as well like how do we actually what what uh, is the csrf how it is handled how does it plays a role in web security So far, the video is not uploaded. As soon as it is uploaded, I'll add the link to the video in the description. So if you are watching it right now, uh, do check the description for the updated list of the videos. Next question was, um, can you tell me something uh, about what are the different positioning in CSS? So again, uh, it is talking about the CSS position uh, property. So absolute, fixed, uh, relative. What is the default position? How? What is the sticky and other stuffs? So this comes under CSS part, and how is stacking context created? I guess uh, in this question, the interviewer is asking about. Uh, let's suppose if you have multiple, you know, styles uh, written for the same class, 
uh, on different lines so how it is getting overridden so i guess the um, uh, when we start executing the lines in css so the last applied property will would be visible on the screen so let's suppose you have class one okay and you have a, a declared class one in this CSS file three times and you have updated the color of some text now it would not be like the first two classes will be shown on onto the website it would be the third uh, declaration where you have declared the third la very last uh, declaration of the class one would be visible on the uh, you know on the um, a viewport so this is how the uh, uh, styles are stacked so if you also can see in the console of the browser you will see that how the previous two classes were overridden okay so this is how the st stacking context is created in cs css and the last question was can you talk about css om so css om stands for css object model i have talked in depth about this css om in the uh, critical rendering part video if you have not checked it out i'll add the link uh, to it in the description in the critical rendering path i have discussed about how dom is created how css om is created uh, what is layouting what is paint what is render tree so these are all very crucial concepts you can check out those videos so this was all about the round one this was a front end round and each round in postman uh, i guess is not a eliminator round they conduct full interviews or uh, uh, of you and then at the end i think they decide whether you want to you are selected or not then the round two was a system design round in this you were asked to make a google sheet and you have to mention the following things over here so what would be the high level component architecture what are the props you will take in the component mention about the ways you will optimize rendering and visualization what will be the api calls for the component so google sheet is basic something like they asked not to implement the whole uh, Google Sheet website, but just the uh, Excel sheets that you see, right? The Excel cells which you see. So you have to make a component that can render these cells based upon the number of rows, number of columns that are passed, and also it can render data. So you have to define what will be the high level component architecture of it. So like you can name it as uh, Excel cells and you pass the row and column and it will automatically generate that many cells of that particular n cross m dimension and it can fill out the data accordingly so what are the properties it can it can take you can talk about basically uh, all of the properties like rows columns uh, the data data object right uh, and this would be uh, and also you can ask the interviewer that whether it uh, it has to support other design system as well then you have to make the uh, jsx come from a prop uh, via the render prop uh, you know design pattern from there render prop design pattern is something which we have discussed already in one of the videos of the rendering pattern series a uh, uh, react design pattern series so do check that out also and what are the various ways you will optimize the rendering and virtualization okay then for the optimization uh, you can talk about how you can utilize the intersection observer like let's suppose uh, you are rendering 100 by 100 uh, cells in a single viewport and let's suppose the user starts scrolling then you can intercept that okay so he has a scroll 50 percent and i have to load next uh, 100 uh, rows or 100 columns uh, depending upon the scroll direction so if he's scrolling horizontally then you have to load next number of rows for the same columns if he is scrolling um like vertically then you have to uh, load x number of rows for the same number of columns so this is this is the optimization you can tell because it is not wise to load all the number of cells and columns in a single request that would be heavy api request and also the database uh, would uh, like take significant time to send the data right you can talk about virtualization and the interviewer can also ask you that what kind of database uh, you can expect in the back end so probably linked list would be the best candidate to uh, make the database because let's suppose even if you delete a cell from uh, from the linked list then you can directly attach a reference to the next node okay so you don't have to update the references for across all the uh, number of rows and columns because that would become trickier there 
So it is very wise to have the database in a form of a link list. Uh, that that's one optimization you can talk about. And what will be the API calls for this component? So in this, you can talk about all of the uh, delete uh, CRUD APIs actually. Like once you are once you are adding a data, then what API call would be made, and whether the data is updated or deleted or modified, like something like that. So you can talk about mention all the CRUD APIs, how they will look like, and this was uh, a system design round uh, for the making for making Google Sheets over here. So this was a pretty uh, interesting round and did. Uh, they won't ask you to code everything, but they are expecting you to at least write a high level component architecture so that it is actually, you know, something is visible on the screen. You, it, it doesn't have to be a completely verbal uh, interview. Okay. The next round was a coding round. So here they asked to code out a type ahead with proper UI performance optimization and show me a list of products. So this is again a very basic uh, problem statement, I guess. So in this, what they you have to actually code it out and show the complete implementation. Okay. And you can, you are expected to write code in anything, whether you want to go with vanilla JS or you can go with react, anything works. And, um, yeah, so code out, uh, type ahead means that there is a search bar. You are typing, uh, out something. And you are making API calls to fetch the data and just below the search bar, you are displaying those items based on your keywords that you have typed in the search box. So you can talk about how you can add debouncing, how you can, um, uh, like, um, avoid many API calls uh, simultaneously, how you can render components, how you can make the JSX more friendly, how you can it, how you can make it generic so that it, it can accept any design pattern okay again rendering pattern a design comes into the picture over here so these are all things and make sure that you make the component as generic as dynamic as possible and this is the way out for the coding round and these were the three technical rounds for the postman sde2 front end interview but um yeah and there was a managerial round as well but again that is not of much importance because uh, there you can expect behavioral questions and then other stuffs. Okay. So that was not of the prime importance. What important is to, uh, have a look at the tech rounds and make yourself, uh, completely comfortable with these type of questions. So this, this was postman for you guys. Uh, I'll be coming up with more, um, interview question series of companies like this in the future. And if you have any questions, then do let me know in the comments. And this was all in this video. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See you in the next one.